My name is Neil Petwari. I'm a professor jointly appointed on electrical and systems engineering and computer science and engineering at Washington University in St. Louis. My co-authors are Dee Wong and Francesca Benetta Mistelli, also at Washington University. As a warning, this talk will address racism, including a brief mention of racial and gendered violence. Hypoxemia is a condition in which the blood in your arteries has insufficient oxygen, which can lead to organ failure and death. Pulse oximeters estimate blood oxygenation using measurements of how much light at two different wavelengths is transmitted through a finger. It is essentially a measurement of color, thus it is affected by skin color, and it is biased for people with darker skin. We call the pulse ox measurement SpO2. Like many of you, I bought a pulse oximeter at the beginning of the pandemic. But when I got COVID in 2021, I didn't know how to interpret my readings. I know they're biased high, but how much higher? And when my parents got COVID and they had never heard of pulse ox bias, what should I be telling them to do with their SpO2 measurements? We were told that SpO2 below 90% indicated that a COVID positive patient should go to the hospital. Hospitals and insurers use SpO2 to decide who should get oxygen via ventilator. SpO2 is still used to decide when a patient can get antiviral medication. And the positive bias for SpO2 for folks with darker skin can give them what Ashraf Bazi calls false reassurance that they're okay when they're actually not. Overall, this means less or delayed treatment for COVID. This is likely one of the reasons for the disparate death rates for Black Americans with COVID. In 2020, a large-scale retrospective study of pulse ox bias was published by Shoding et al., um, my reference to on an earlier slide, which received a lot of attention in the context of COVID-19 and the murder of George Floyd. In 2021, in response to this study and others, multiple researchers suggested that we could determine the bias by race and subtract it from the pulse ox estimate, or equivalently, we could use different thresholds by the race of the patient. The use of race-based correction has a long and sorted history in the United States, so we were skeptical. The main contribution of this paper is to find out how well such a strategy could work. Can it achieve equitable outcomes? We use the larger of the two data sets used by Schoding et al. in their famous 2020 paper. It includes a huge set of pulse ox and ground truth arterial blood oxygenation measurements from ICU patients at over 200 U.S. hospitals. We take only the pairs of arterial blood oxygenation and SpO2 recorded within 10 minutes of each other, just as Schoding and co-authors did. And there are over 200,000 pairs of this data in our data set. But one main limitation of the data set is that it's mostly white patients. We have particular problems making conclusions on Asian and Native American patients due to the fact that there are very few in the data set. We do see the same racial bias that Schoding and other researchers found, but further, we also see a statistically significant difference in the standard deviation of the measurements between patients racialized as white and black. Pulse ox measurements are noisier for black patients. In our paper, we explore two explanations why the standard deviation is higher. One explanation requires an understanding of how race is constructed in the U.S. context. It's ironic that I'm explaining this to you in the state of Florida, where it is potentially illegal for, to say this in public education, but it's critical to understand the pulse ox issue. In this explanation, pulse ox is likely biased by skin color. People's skin color varies within a racial group. So why is there more pulse ox variance within black patients compared to white patients? It's important to know that racism is real, but race is socially constructed. It was designed centuries ago to justify slavery. During slavery, the matrilineal descent rule was formed so that, as Dorothy Roberts says, white enslavers could profit from their sexual assaults on Black women by enslaving any resulting children. Then, after slavery, the one-drop rule was law. Anyone with any Black ancestor was considered Black. As a result of this history, people racialized as Black have a wide variety of skin tones. One would expect that if the SpO2 bias is a function of a person's melanin content, that this wider variation would lead to a wider distribution of SpO2 for a given blood oxygenation level. Now I'm going to discuss the impact of higher SpO2 variants on hypoxemia detection. Hypoxemia is detected whenever SpO2 is below a threshold. The threshold is chosen to manage the trade-off between false alarms, or type 1 error, on the x-axis, 
and missed detections or type 2 error. The probability of correct detection is shown on the y-axis. This is called an ROC curve, here showing results for patients racialized as white in our data set. The best performance would be at the top left of the curve. And as the threshold is increased, the probability of correct detection increases. But that higher threshold is also triggered more often for someone who doesn't actually have hypoxemia or a false alarm. I add to the plot the ROC curve for patients racialized as black. The performance for the same threshold is connected by a blue line. No threshold equalizes the probabilities, not if we use the same threshold for all patients or if we use a different threshold for different racial groups. The ROC curve for white patients is purely to the upper left of the curve for black patients. For example, a hypoxemia threshold of 89.5 would result in identical probability of false alarm for both racial groups. However, the probability of correct detection for white patients is 35%, a full 10 percentage points higher than for Black patients. One could set a higher threshold for Black patients of 91.5, which would equalize the probability of correct detection, but then the probability of false alarm would increase dramatically from about 3% to about 5%. False alarms are also costly and should be avoided. So in conclusion, no race-based correction factor can fix the bias problem for pulse oximeters. This may be the consequence of significantly higher error variance. In general, it will be necessary to fix the pulse ox, its measurements and its algorithms for calculating SpO2, not just adjust the SpO2 output after the fact. Thank you.